In this video, I will demonstrate how to set up speed fusion features such as hot failover and bandwidth bonding to your network. Also, I will demonstrate how you can evaluate the speed fusion bonding speed. This can be done by conducting two different tests, the PET VPN test and the WAN analysis. Before we get started, I will briefly explain what these speed fusion features are. Hot failover is a specific feature of Peplink speed fusion technology that offers the opportunity for you to maintain session persistence. This is achieved by seamlessly transferring traffic from one WAN connection to another, in the event that the first WAN connection fails or disconnects. This is extremely beneficial as users won't experience interruptions in their network or for online applications such as VoIP, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, and Zoom. Another speed fusion feature that I will help you set up today is bandwidth bonding. This feature allows you to combine data at the packet level, enabling you to combine the speed of multiple connections. This is especially useful in situations where bandwidth is scarce. This technology allows users to gain access to the internet in remote locations, providing companies with the opportunity to create branches in different locations, as they will have high speed and constant contact with the headquarters. Great, so now that you understand what the technology is, I'll briefly explain the network topology. To achieve a speed fusion tunnel, you must have two endpoints, meaning two devices are required. One device is the host, which usually has an ethernet cable and a fixed public IP. If you don't have a static IP on this WAN connection, then you can also register it with a supported DDNS service to create speed fusion to the WAN DDNS host name. The other device usually has an ethernet or cellular connection with a dynamic IP. In this demo, I'll be using two separate Balance 20x routers to achieve a speed fusion tunnel. Also, to achieve speed fusion and manage your speed fusion tunnel, you need to have access to InControl2, so make sure that you have an active subscription for that. The firmware needs to be either 6.1 or 3.41, which is the bare minimum. But, to have access to our latest features, make sure you update to 8.3.0 and 3.9.3. .3. As mentioned previously, our goal in this demo is to achieve a speed fusion tunnel and set up the hot failover and bandwidth bonding features. Then, at the end, we will also conduct tests to make sure that these features are working properly. Great, so let's get started now. The first step is to log into InControl2. Make sure you've already added your devices to your organization. Once you've logged in, head to the Speed Fusion VPN tab at the top, then click on Configuration. Here you'll need to enable the Speed Fusion configuration and add a profile. You can choose the topology you want to create. For this demo, I'll be creating a star topology. Then head to the Hub Devices section. Here you need to select which device will be the hub or the host device and you need to input its IP address. Then for the Endpoint Devices section, select your endpoint device. Now, head to the Profile Options section. Here, you can configure your Speed Fusion VPN settings, such as setting up the VPN encryption and the type of bonding, whether it's normal bonding or dynamic weighted bonding. For this demo, I'll be disabling the features like WAN smoothing features and forward error correction. Once you configure your Speed Fusion settings to your liking, click Next. Your Speed Fusion tunnel should be ready now. Now, let's start doing the speed test. Before we start, it's important to note that the speed fusion overhead is 19% of the total transmitted data. This means 19% of the overall bandwidth will be dedicated to setting up the speed fusion tunnel and the encryption. Speed fusion uses a fixed number of bytes per packet transmitted, an additional 80 bytes. Therefore, speed fusion bandwidth bonding is much more efficient when transmitting larger packet sizes. For example, for a packet size of 1,500 bytes, Speed Fusion adds just 5% of bandwidth overhead, but at a packet size of 40 bytes, the Speed Fusion overhead rises to 200%. First, we're going to start with the WAN analysis test. To do this, head over to your web admin page for your hub or host device. Then click on the System tab at the top. Now you can head to WAN analysis, which is under the Tools section on the left. Here, you can choose the type of test you want to conduct, whether it's TCP or UDP. You can also choose the direction that you want to test, whether it's upload or download speeds. Finally, the duration of the test can also be customized. Before you start the test, you also need to input the local WAN connections under the Data Streams section. 
On my second device, I have a WAN and a cellular connection, so I'll input both and also put in the remote IP address which can be found on the dashboard of the web admin page. Once you've input all the required information, you can go ahead and click start. Once the test is done, you will have access to a table and a graph to see the results. On the table, you can also see the overall pure one-to-one -one speed. Now I'll demonstrate how to conduct a Speed Fusion VPN test. First, head to the web admin page for your endpoint device. Then head to the status bar on the top. Now on the left, you should be able to see Speed Fusion VPN. Click on that. After that, click on the arrow on the top right. This will take you to a page where you can see the status of your Speed Fusion VPN in more detail. To start the test, head to the Speed Fusion VPN test configuration section and click on the type of test you want to conduct whether it's TCP or UDP, the direction you want to test, whether it's upload or download, and the duration of the test. You can also disable one of the connections to isolate the connection you want to test. So first I will test the SpeedFusion WAN 1 connection, so now I have to disable the cellular connection. Once you've done that, click Start. After the test is complete, you'll be able to see the SpeedFusion VPN WAN 1 overall speed, which in this case is around 32 megabits per second. Now I will disable the WAN connection and enable the Cellular 2 connection to test the SpeedFusion VPN Cellular 2 speed. After that, you can start the test. As you can see, I've got my SpeedFusion VPN Cellular 2 speed, which is around 16 megabits per second. Finally, I can test the SpeedFusion VPN bonding speed. To do so, I need to enable both the WAN and the Cellular connection. After the test is complete, I can see that the overall SpeedFusion VPN bonding speed is around 40 megabits per second. This is much faster than the speeds obtained from the individual WAN and cellular connection, meaning that we've successfully achieved bandwidth bonding to obtain faster speeds. Now we can move on to the final test in this demo, the hot failover test. For the hot failover test, I will disable the cellular WAN connection on my second endpoint to see how fast the connection can switch and transfer the traffic to the main WAN connection to keep the speed fusion tunnel alive. To start, you need to first head to the status tab on the host device, then go to the client list. Here you can see the IP address for your different devices. After this, open up the command prompt and confirm the IP address for your device that is connected. Then figure out the path to the internet, including how many nodes or hops. Now you can keep checking the destination while disconnecting the WAN cellular. It should show request timed out for a brief moment before all the traffic is switched over to the WAN connection. But the speed fusion tunnel will still be alive the whole time. Also the time it takes for hot failover to work and for the traffic to be transferred to the WAN connection will be shown on the command prompt page. Clearly it's very fast as it's in the millisecond range. Now when I remove the ethernet cable as well, the WAN connection will be down and the SpeedFusion VPN tunnel will be disconnected.